What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 511 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. Happy Thursday to you and yours. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined, as always, by Ben Askren, who is in the middle of renovations of his basement. Hey, it's going, it's, it's going well. I, you know what? I ordered some new lights, so by next week, I'll probably be looking much prettier for you guys. Wow. Um, cool. Yeah, I, I'm most of the way there. I got the... Well, let's see. So now and see. Okay, I would never show you this before because I was always worried that that piece was going to freeze the freeze the stream, Christian. All right. So here's what happened. Oh, here we go. Uh, I got a wall built here. Okay. I see that? See, I don't even have. I don't even have. Uh, let's see. This way, right here. That's not yep. painted yet. Mm-hmm. Um. So because my kids they break in significantly too often. Yeah. It was not a good. It's not a good situation. Um, so I built that wall. We already had an extra door because we didn't use it for something. Um, so that, that got done. Um, and we got most of the stuff moved around, uh, but not everything yet. That's great. Well, yes. congratulations. I'm glad you're so, so uh, capable. I'm trying to become a professional podcaster. Wow. Well, you have how many podcasts? I Well, I have uh, four. So I do the rudest one. I do... Funky and FRB, which is MMA one, and I do the Funky Crypto Show. And you do this one. And I do this one. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope I was hoping they would get that because since I was already on here, <laughs> people have maybe their first one. They may not know you do this one. Uh, we're getting new les- listeners every single day. Well, I th- I said I think last week that if you aren't following Ivan underscore Freestyle or Sickum underscore D, you're playing yourself. Because this guy is the freaking oracle, and he knows what's going to happen before it happens. And he tweeted before anyone else said anything, he's right again, that they're looking at having junior worlds, U23s, and looking to have senior worlds in December. And uh, several hours later, maybe later that day, comes out, UWW puts out a release. Yes, there is a chance we have junior worlds, U23s, and senior worlds in December. Which gets everyone's heads spinning because there, it immediately creates around sixty-seven different questions. Right? One. So many que- questions. So many questions. I have so many questions that I expect you to have all the answers for this morning. Well, good. Um, that's that's uh that's not a, an intimidating task at all. So the the first thing is okay. Everyone, deep breaths. Calm down. Nothing's for sure. Yeah. Let's not get super hurt again. It's been a very painful couple months in terms of news for wrestling fans. So let's just be prepared for it to not happen because UWW did not say we are going to have anything. They said, hey, we're going to – we want to. We would like to. They want to get bids for for seniors in December. And the final decision-ish sounds like it will come in August. So it's June. No final decisions, so know that, right? But one thing we do know, if they have it, USA is going to send a squad, okay? And my understanding is this is a 10-weight world championships, all right? Yeah. So that begs some questions, all right? When would we determine our team? Would we have another final X situation? I would would hope that that would be possible. But most importantly, or maybe most interestingly, it's – who goes what waits, okay? Do we get bad blood? Do we not have to wait until April? Will we have it sometime in the fall, right? Will we have Dake versus Taylor, part 9 and 10 or 11, right? That's possible. Where Wait, would Jaden Cox go? Who Would the NCAA guys go? Would we see Spencer and Dayton and uh, Soriano say, hey, we're going to try to make the world team? Because it actually, honestly, it could work perfectly for NCAA athletes. Um, at least for 2020 worlds. Because, you, you mean if if they don't if they don't do well, then they just go right into season. Well, do well or don't do well, or even make, if they do well, it's fine because December you would wrestle the world championships. Basically, no folk style through December. Okay, and they're even talking well, about. Well, hold on. Well, well about, hold you. Let me finish this. You, and then, you no. asked 97 questions. Well, I'm I'm going to answer them. Okay, so all of them. You're gonna have a monologue this whole show. Yeah, hold on. So all <laughs> okay. I'm saying okay. is, okay, I'll just shut up. Go. No, they wrestle 
They wrestle. They could wrestle the world championships, and then if they're going to do the thing where they don't start the season till January, then okay, make the team take a couple weeks off. Then, then boom, Spencer Lee can join the Hawkeyes. Dayton Fix can join the Cowboys, et cetera, et cetera. That's all I was saying. Okay. Well, so I, so a couple, I mean, there, there's a whole bunch to unpack there. Uh, obviously, the possibility that, that there could only be one college guy per weight maximum, obviously, right? So there's going to be a whole bunch of college guys who don't make the team. So, right. or, or maybe don't even, don't even fare all that well at, say, the U.S. Open trials type of scenario. So then they could just roll themselves right back into the season and say, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I should just do the college season this year. Um, but how realistic is the moving in January thing? Because if they do some kind of college football season, I don't really see there being any reason why they couldn't have any type of wrestling season. I mean, right? I mean, football is actually significantly more contact because there's eleven on eleven, which is uh, a whole bunch of permutations if you're a math nerd. Um, whereas wrestling is one on one. Well, I would say I don't think they would back wrestling up to January because of infection. I think it would. I just think that's what they think makes the most sense logistically for whatever reason with. What what are the logistics I there? I don't know. My, my guess is that it has more to do with the crowds than the athletes. Well, you could just mm. the crowds potentially. I don't know. But e- either way, let's say they do start in November, November first, just like always. I still think it's it works well for the college yeah. kids if they do have the success or don't have the success, whatever, because you would be able to do the world's thing and then taper off and then ramp back up for, for D ones. Now that is an intense stretch. If you think about it like this and I wonder if, I, I mean, we've seen some guys, some NCAA guys like opt to not compete freestyle, right. And so that they mm-hmm. can preserve yeah. themselves for college. Like, would we see like up until senior nationals, we had not seen Spencer Lee entered a senior level tournament, right? Even though we all knew he could compete on that level. So would he say, you look at this calendar and knowing that Spencer Lee and Dayton Fix and all these guys want to be Olympic champions, and do you sign yes. up for, okay, I'll try to make the team in September, October. I don't know when they're going to have trials, if they would have trials, and then wrestle in December at world championships and then do yep. a D1 season through March and then do Olympic trials in April. And then the, then you're really stacking up you know, a well, very intense competition schedule. Yeah. So I, I guess so that's what I am. Um, uh, I guess that that's what I'm saying about, I mean, especially if we have an open trials in October, September, October, November, whatever it is, um, man, if you're an athlete, you're going to have a really, really good idea of how good your chances are of actually making the team. Um, and so, yeah, if you're one of those guys who's a seven, eight, nine at that point in time, or six, seven, eight, nine, somewhere that way, way, a little farther down, dude, you better just go wrestle the college season. You know, unless for some reason the coach thinks it'd be better for the team if you were to sit out. Um, but obviously, yeah, if you're Dayton or Spencer or Yanni, it probably doesn't make all that much sense for them to do all those things because that's probably not all that conducive to them having the best performance possible. So what what do you – what do you anticipate happening then? What do you think these guys would decide? Or what's the best combination of freestyle, full yeah. style, NCAA, non NCAA? Well, I, th- I think it would only be a handful of people. So I, th- I think the number would be relatively small. As compared to, say, last year, there was how many? Probably 20, 20 Olympic red shirts or something to that effect, maybe maybe more. I, I feel like it would be, I feel like these a lot of these guys would shoot their shot in, in that October. Um, October, whatever that time frame that's in, and if they weren't close or weren't all that competitive, then they would be, uh, you know, moving on to the college. See, like you know, who's a great example? Jaden Ironman, who didn't do all that well at U.S. Open. He's probably gonna try the U.S. Open again. If he doesn't do that well, he's just gonna go right to his college season. For some reason, all of a sudden, he makes the finals. Well, man, he might as well Olympic red shirt. Yeah, that's is that, true. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. I, I do wonder yeah. if the this 2020 new set of events will have any impact on qualification for the 2021 Olympic trial, U.S. Olympic trials, because I think that could be um, incentive for some of these college guys to try to make the team. And if they place high enough at the U.S. Open or if they place high enough in the trials, the world team trials for 20, and that gets them a spot in the 2021 Olympic trials that they wouldn't have had otherwise, 
you know, they're not they're not really losing out mm-hmm. on all that much because like you said, Ben, only one guy per weight's gonna actually make the team. Everybody else yeah. is gonna be done by that September, October, whenever theoretical trials date anyway. So there's really I, I think there's not much for anyone to lose by throwing their hat in the ring then. And then, yeah, if they've somehow rise to the top and make the team, then they have a harder decision to make. But for a lot of guys, it's just, I think, a great opportunity to either potentially try to qualify for the Olympic trials. No, no idea if that will be, even be an option, if USA Wrestling will, will expand the Olympic trials qualification. If nothing else, you know, it's an opportunity to test themselves against the field. Yeah. You know, uh, the other thing that I don't believe you said that's puzzling about this thing is that if they, if they do the 2020 Worlds, they're not going to include that in the seating system and qualification system for the 2021 Olympics, mm-hmm. which is like, that that seems like beyond reality. Like, I mean, obviously, I'm understanding you can't take away what happened in 2019 because that would just be semi-unfair. But at the same time, are we just going to act like this didn't happen? Well, um, I, I think the ranking seeding for Olympics is going to be really tough to do without Worlds having any pertinence. And yeah. I think the ranking series is going to – I don't know how they're going to determine it for, for the Olympic Games, the, the seeding. I think they should – I honestly wonder if they it would be more – if it would make more sense just to do random draw one more time. For 20? For 20. For, oh, no, for 21. The, worst, the worst thing ever, Christian. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to. I mean, you're right that it's terrible, but random draw it might be worse than terrible. <laughs> I don't know how they. There have been no ranking series events for this 2020 Worlds. Also, all the ranking series events were for the Olympics. So anybody that would go to a non Olympic weight, um, or I mean, the non Olympic weights in general, wouldn't have any ranking series data right now. So I, I wonder for this 2020 Senior Worlds, how they see that. You know, is that just. I don't know how you do anything other than random draw. I mean, why, why you, wouldn't they use you know. twenty? Use twenty nineteen. Yeah, I mean, maybe so. It's a world championships. It's better than nothing. At least you're gonna have the top couple people separated, and and yeah. that's better than not, right? It's better than having them wrestle the first round, like yeah, Donnie you know, and like, Taylor don't, did. Don't the Continentals have a have large uh, impact on rankings? And like, I don't think there have been Euros in Asia. And, uh, no, there have not. So, I mean, how do you? Pan Am guys are all going to get really highly seated because well, no, just, just say worlds, just say worlds. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe you do that. So I, um, I'm less interested in, in the seating and more interested in the American decisions. Like who's going to do what for, for Dake, would he go down to 74? You would have to assume, you got to assume. but I assumed yeah. in 2019 and yeah. he got injured and wasn't able to, make it down to 74. Um, so I don't know. The, did, you know, could Jordan Oliver, will he will he come down to 65 uh, again? Would we see Jaden? I mean, he's the big decision for me, right? Where does he go? Because he could go 92 again, or he could just say, you know, I'm 97 yeah. moving forward. Yeah. I mean, would USA Wrestling give I, – didn't they offer wrestle off last year if either of those guys, so Jacob Burroughs moved up? Wasn't that like if there's a world medalist that moves up to a not, to an Olympic weight class and wants to come back, did they give them the option? Maybe. What? How? Would, I don't understand. What would that – So mean meaning if they, if, they, if they didn't make the team – well, so if Jaden wrestled 97 and didn't make the Got team, it. then he would have the, the possibility to late, then later challenge at 92, make the team there because obviously, you know, if you take – okay, so – I, I'm not gonna pick the winner, but if you take Dake Burrows, you take one of them off the board. Uh, Snyder Cox take one of them off the board. Team America is not as good as if you could put those guys, you know, one of each of those guys in. Yeah. Now I don't remember if that happened or not. Uh, I thought they threw that out. I thought that was suggested or maybe was a rule, and then okay. they said for this year that that wouldn't be the case. But I don't. I don't know. I'm just just going off my memory, which is you know, okay. Hit or miss. So I don't know, but I, I mean, that would make sense, but part of me is like, man, pick the weight, go the weight you want to go. I've just seen, I don't know. It's just my, my own opinion for how we should pick the team, but I understand wanting to have the best team. I, yeah. The big yeah. question for me is like, who would even go in those non-Olympic weights? I, one guy that I think could 
would be James Green. He talked about how difficult it was to keep that 74 kilo size on mm. during this during this offseason. So he's a guy I could definitely see going 70. Yeah. I mean, Ringer Zahid, um, Bo Nickel, 92. Would he would he do that? I think that would make sense. Um, there would certainly be guys that would volunteer for it, I believe, just as in 2019 we had guys in non-Olympic weights. It's no different now in 2020 in terms of what it means for the Olympic trials in 2021. Mm -hmm. It's no real difference. Uh, but I, I think I think for – I think Jaden is so much different than Kyle, Kyle Dake for so many reasons. But I don't know if he sees – I don't know if he looks at the trials qualification system and thinks I need to get myself the buy to the thing to do it. I don't, I just don't think he looks at it the way Dake does. So part of me thinks yeah. he may consider staying at 92. I don't know. Um, ben, if you have any insight there. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly what his, what his size is. Um, you know, but I feel like with the amount he sweats, like I don't think he could get to two thirty. I don't think he gets to two thirty anymore. I think he was there when he was younger because he, you know, so, uh, self admittedly, he you know he ate a whole bunch and had a really poor diet. Um, so I, I think he sticks. I mean, my guess would be two fifteen to two twenty. I mean, before he announced he was going up, everyone would, was just seeing pictures of him and saying how small he looked and that he has to be going down because he looks so small, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would think he can make it. I would think, though, that he would want to wrestle Kyle Steiner off and see how that goes at 97, and then maybe if that didn't work out, go back to 92. Yeah, I could I could see that. I, I just think it makes sense for him to do it right now. But, yeah, you know, after, you know, you've, you're a two-time world champion. You know what would happen if you went 92. Ultimately, you want to win, win the Olympics, right? So he mm -hmm. goes through... 97 and you can take away the the buy that kyle is definitely kyle's gonna kyle's uh if jane doesn't go 97 kyle will make the team and kyle medals every single time so i know there have been random things that have happened where locks to medal don't but he's basically gonna medal so you basically would be conceding yeah. the buy and he conceded the buy before but mm -hmm. i think given that he was preparing to do go 97 all yeah. you know spring that it would just make sense that he would just do it, right, and just stay. I, up I think he does. Up. Yeah, you do. I think. Yeah, I think. I, but I think he goes up. I think. I think. Like I said, I think U.S. wrestling, if they have it, should find a way, some fair way, to have whoever's the loser of '97 and '74 find a new home after the the wrestle offs. Yes. Yes. I mean, I think. I know. That, I wanna, yeah, I know. I know that's strange. I know that's strange, but. Listen, if you want to do the best, if you want to make the best team, and may, maybe you say it's very easy, Christian. Maybe you say you have to be a world champion to get a, a wrestle off into the weight class. Well, all, all four of those guys that I mentioned are world champions, right? So it'd be Jaden, and it would be Dake, right, or Burroughs and Snyder. well, no, no, yeah, yeah, they're all, all four of those guys are world champions. Yeah. So you know, they, they would fit in Can that. You imagine Kyle Snyder many, how, going down to ninety two. I just that just doesn't even sound right. It doesn't, <laughs> but you go to go to. Yeah, he'd probably have to get smaller significantly, right? Because oh, wasn't gosh. it kind of hard for him to make 197? Well, I know. I, oh, yeah. 90, 197 pounds was not easy for Kyle. Um, but, I mean, I think he probably, if the Olympic weight was 197 and the other one was yeah. heavy, I think he would probably, I think he'd be able to do 197, right? And this is yeah. 202, yeah. 202.8. So basically, two hundred three. Uh, I guess he could do it. Mm -hmm. I, I think the I think the ninety seven kilogram cut is not like a walk in the park. I think it's basically pretty easy, but I don't. It's a thing. Yeah. He doesn't just like walk on the scale. Yeah. Because I know if you remember uh, Final X last year, we had the the crazy weigh in stuff where guys would step on the scale. Kyle. Snyder and Jordan Burroughs, the first time they stepped on, they were slightly over. And so Kyle had to, he stepped on, and then I don't think it was for the actual mm -hmm. weigh ins, but he, he checked his before weigh ins. And he's like, oh, I was on upstairs and I'm over down here. So he had to go up and like get the last little bit off. So he's not just like walking around at, at 213, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then why would he want to cut the 92 when he has to be back at 97? 
next year uh, or not not even next year right in like six six months or less that's the thing we could have yeah <laughs> make we sense. could have um you know basically three world championships in less than a year yeah. Right. So okay. So let me ask you about that, Christian. So then, because the, we didn't, you didn't bring that up yet. It says there'll be a twenty twenty one World Championships. There is a date on it already. Right. Um, yeah. But is that just a non Olympic weight, or is that all? We're just having World Championships all weights. I've got to figure it's it's non Olympic only, right? You'd have to think because why would you have Olympics and then World Championships roughly two two months after that? That would be weird. You know, you know, it'd be crazy if someone, if Burroughs or Jaden or Dake, one of those guys, won all three. Like, what if? You, you well, I thought it? you couldn't do that. I thought when you wrestled the Olympic way, you could oh, do, the that's not, true. And do the yeah, that's Olympic. true. Yeah, I don't think they you did do prohibit that. you. Yeah. That's yeah. They mm -hmm. they prohibited people in 2016, but I think in 2012, I think you could do both. Elena Periskova, I think, made the Olympic team in 12, and then and then. Won the non Olympic weight world championships the same year. I think Adeline, um, maybe not, maybe not Adeline. I don't remember. Mm. But, so I, but I, yeah, I would, I would think if it's not Olympic, then those guys probably couldn't compete um, in the 2021 worlds. But it, it has to be a tough, you know, that's tough news for whoever agreed to be the host city to find out that you thought you were, you thought you were signing up for this full 10 weight class. Damn, world right. Oh. And then they switch it. So I, I mean, Ouch. that, that makes me wonder. Just you know, as a political move, if they'll consider it, I, I I don't think they probably will. I don't think they probably should. But um, depending on how how big a factor like the the host city's investment into the event was, it it kind of makes me at least wonder. Yeah, I mean, so okay, let me let me th let me just recap for so like in two thousand eight, I I obviously lost at the Olympics. If they would have said you get another shot in two months, I'm in. I'm in. Right yeah, now, if oh, I would have really? won. If I would have won, I might have said, uh, yeah, I might sit this one. I just won the Olympics. Why do I need to go prove it again? To, again, prove it again two months later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be weird yeah. that I'm going to win the Olympics, which I've been building up since I've been, you know, 15 years old. And now, now you want me to wrestle again two months later and reprove it? Like, that just doesn't seem worth my time. How weird was it being in a bracket with Saitiev? Just knowing everything you knew about that guy. Probably you probably remembered would, him a lot. Yeah, I loved him. Uh, I was excited to wrestle him because I thought, you know, I mean, now we're getting. <laughs> I, don't mean, I hate making excuses, Christian. Uh, but I identified Fundora as the person who would be the most difficult person for me to wrestle in the bracket because of he was really hard to get to his legs, and I wasn't great at getting to like people people's legs in the first place. And so when he was in my way, and that was the next match with Steve, it double sucked because. Number one, I got my worst matchup. Number two, he's not going to beat Satya, right? Yeah. So, so that was terrible. Back. So I knew if I lost, I wasn't going to get pulled back. Obviously, I lost, and then I, I didn't get pulled back. Um, yeah, I would I would have loved to wrestle Satya because um, you know I I just felt as though I could you know and who knows obviously I never I never got to actually feel it out, but I felt as though I could win the scrambles and maybe that was me being having a false sense of belief in myself, who knows, or maybe, maybe there was some unique things I would have brought to the table that he hadn't felt before. Well, yeah, I think if we're going down the 2008, 74 rabbit hole, Fundora it was just a worse matchup than Saitia was for you. Like there's a, yeah. there's just like less likelihood of you catching Fundora in something yeah. just because he was so solid and, and strong. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Satya, what a, so, what a monster. Yeah. He was awesome. Winning, winning chips with salt and pepper hair. Like, he's literally <laughs> completely great and just, like, beating everyone. Seriously. Like, it's like, this is, an, mean, old, this is an old man. But the thing is, though, he wasn't really that he old. That he was great early. Because he won his first title at 19 in 95, right? He won the, right. We won the we got Olympics. Uh, uh, 96. No, no, no he, he won, he won the Worlds world. in 95, yeah. Yeah, the Worlds were 95 in Atlanta, and then he won the Olympics in Atlanta also. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Back Same. to back. Yeah, so what? when was he born? When was his full deep birthday, does it say? 70, 70, 75. Was it, 75. What, what, what was it victory day in Russia? <laughs> Three eleven, March Maybe. 11th, 75. Okay. So he was... That's my, wife, my, wife, that's my wife's birthday. Oh, my gosh. Circle oh of my life. Oh, my goodness. So he was 33 when he won the... Uh, 
won the Olympics <laughs> then. Yes. That's pretty uh, – that's up there for a wrestling Olympic champion at 74. Yeah. Especially because it was over the course of four Olympics. I mean, his first Olympics was not 96 when he was super young. 2000, obviously, he lost to Slay. Um, and then yeah. 2004, he wins. 2008, he wins. According to the UWW database, in 98, he just bumped up to 85 kilos for Euros and won it. It's like <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't his brother? Yeah, yeah. And they, they might have just listed their names incorrect because I know Adam was up, was up, but uh, it's this is on yeah. on Bubasar's. Everything else is seventy four, seventy six, and then uh, he's got one result at eighty five kilos. Why not? Why not? Where? Why not? What a beast he was. Okay. So okay, so you guys think if they do do the twenty, if they do the twenty twenty one worlds, it will be non Olympic weights. I mean, that, yeah. that's the only thing that really makes sense, right? And plus, when you think about it, it's a it's a more uh, robust offering than it was in 2016 when it was just two weights per style. It'll be four weights per style now, right? Yeah. Because yeah, they yeah. added mm-hmm. 79 and 92. So that makes it now we've got, you know, 12 weights. You know, it's a, a couple day tournament. It's still, it's not, nothing's going to, when you take out the Olympic weights, it is just not as compelling, but it'll be. Yeah, I think more interesting and more um, exciting than the 2016 one was. Yes, especially if Logan Steber enters and just has like you know like thing. four straight buzzer beater wins for a world title. That was insane. Yeah, seriously, that was that was wild. Yeah. You almost forget because it was the non-Olympic year that Logan Steber is in fact a world champion. I feel like that kind of gets left off his resume a little bit. I do not leave it off his resume. I feel like I bring it up a lot. You better I not. To, I try to fight that, uh, fight that fight because it wasn't wasn't given the um, full treatment that you know a regular. So you feel the same way then? I I feel that it happens, but I feel that I make a point to never ever do that. Got it. And I I Got refer it. to him more often as world champion Logan Steber than uh, four time NCAA champion. What you do you think he probably, prefers? What which, which do you think he likes more? I'm. It's got to be the four time, right? That is just, yeah, not a lot yeah, of people do I that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of people did that. Yeah. I. It's got to be that. I mean, there, there's just how so ma- much more. How many? Was it like five or six or seven? <laughs> what, four-time NCAA champions? I'm joking. All right. Um, there's only someone... four. Christian, there, Christian, there's only four NCAA champions that did it four times. Okay. Wow. Someone you aware? Checked. Someone fact check Ben. We'll see. Uh, we should do an article to do do a fact finding <laughs> mission. Uh, hey, did you guys know? Um, I mean, I don't know where we want to go from here, but I I just do want to say the words that um, Gatsalov coming back, but wrestling for Armenia. Yeah. So Gatsalov is like I don't know a five, six, seven time world and Olympic champion from Russia. He was like a. He's wrestled Kale. He's wrestled. He's beaten Snyder and Kale. Um, his his first world title was in two thousand one. Yeah. So oh my he's, god. He's an old person, but he's still really good. Don't don't talk about God Solov like that. It's not a he, it's not a negative. He's he's been he's been active. Legends since never 90, age. Ninety three. He's only thirty seven. He's only thirty seven. Dude, yeah. for Allegedly. a wrestler, yeah, he's he's thirty seven in Russian years. So who knows how old he is. Well, he hadn't competed <laughs> since he hasn't competed since 2016, so he's he's probably fresh as a daisy. Yeah, fresh as a daisy, wrestling for Army. Because he hasn't even been tested. Then that means. Oh, stop! But well, what yeah, do you mean <laughs> stop? Like, I mean, they they get busy when they're getting tested. Think about when they're not getting tested. Then what happens? They yeah, get some stuff that we never even heard of. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. I'd like to see. So he's. Christian, we don't have to listen. Listen, we don't have to beat around the bush because there was a movie called Icarus, which very clearly outlined what happened in detail. Yeah, I know. Listen, no one's talked it, more about Russian cheating. I talk about it all the time, and Icarus is great. Okay. Uh, so, I, Ivan Freestyle's been tweeting about Gatsalov since May, and uh, he's got like little quotes from interviews with Gatsalov. Um, Gatsalov said, "My score two zero with Snyder. His wrestling is comfortable for me. Snyder was in nice shape. In the <laughs> lawn- <laughs> Snyder was in nice shape at the lawn- <laughs> 2019, like in Rio. I think he was ready at 
wasn't so, ready. Or wasn't ready at uh, World, World Championships 2019. Then he says, Jaden Cox will beat him at U.S. Olympic trials. He is more technical. And then he says, I am impressed with Mohamed Ian. Um, and then he also talked about uh, Sajulayev. He said, he is my hardest competitor. I decided to return at 2016 end. Res- rescheduling of Olympic Games 2020 is better for me. I'm not afraid of competing in Russia. But for me, it is more interesting to meet with Sajulayev on the international mat. I hope we'll show my best wrestling. So Whoa. don't you love Russian translation? I don't know why it, <laughs> great. it turns out to be to be so fantastic, but it's just great. <laughs> I, I I love it. Carpet. I, I wish the words carpet struggle were involved, but other than that, just great, um, great reading, good update. And I I love how it sounds so funny when he's beating around the bush. Like, okay, man, just just admit you can't beat Sejulayev, and you're gonna go wrestle on a team. I'm totally cool with that. Sejulayev's like pretty much the best guy ever. Yeah. Uh, and so just just say that, but. It make it more interesting to not wrestle him in Russia. I will <laughs> wrestle him international only. Oh, that's great. So that's yeah. that's I can't wait. I can't wait to see. But he he does have some results up at one twenty. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I would assume he's talking about Snyder. He's talking about Sajulayev. So he's he's got to be going ninety seven. But he does have yes. some results up at heavyweight. Yeah, he was there for who pushed him up there? I can't recall right now. Uh, Gadisov. Gadisov, yes, 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 yes. Nice. Um, okay, where are we going? We're going to uh, women's sports, or women's wrestling, emerging sports status? Yes, that's great news. We knew that D2 and D3 had emerging sports, but now D1. Uh, ben Askren, your, your overall thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're seeing all of the dominoes fall in this thing. I think there is... Uh, uh, 26 I saw. I believe Illinois just voted to add women's high school wrestling as an official sport. I believe they're state number 26. Wisconsin is freaking slacking. Come on. Wisconsin has a lot. We have a lot of women's wrestlers. We always do really well at Fargo. I, don't, I do not know what the WIA's issue is. Um, but I think I think they vote on it here in a couple weeks in Wisconsin. So, you know, we're, we're way over half for women's wrestling sanctioned by state associations. Um and so I, I think it's only a matter of time now until it happens at the college level officially. The press release from the NCAA said that um, they needed 20 programs to get to emerging sports status, and then they need 40 NCAA programs to be considered for championship status. And according to Wrestle Like a Girl and USA Wrestling, there are 35 NCAA schools currently sponsoring women's wrestling. So, um, so that's all, all. That's all. All divisions, all NCAA divisions. So I and Not, I don't know how I don't know how that works. Like I don't know if when they add a sport, if it if it comes in as just like NCAA sport, no divisions. Or I mean, if you chop it up into Division One, Two, II, and Three, all of a sudden it's you know that's those are really small championships. Small. So I don't know. I I think it'd just be great to get it going and I don't know start at a single division and then eventually build towards D One, Two, Three. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Um, but one thing I was thinking and. and Obviously, Iowa has been a big supporter of women's wrestling and talking not not only in the senior level support, but they've talked a lot about having, uh, you know, the importance of it getting that D1 status. My question is, okay, so, you know, in like the Big Ten and to be in the Big Ten, you have to have wrestling. That's like a part of it. You can't be in the Big Ten and not have a wrestling team. It's part of it. So would it similarly apply to Big Ten women's wrestling, right? All right. So if Iowa gets it. Does that mean would would that apply to all the Big Ten teams? Because I think that would be obviously an amazing start. Because if you get the conference, the premier conference, and everyone's on board, what a great launch point that is for NCAA wrestling, right? Yeah, I I agree. I mean, I think a few a few bigger programs get at it. It would help. Hey, the thing I want to ask you. So I, I'm guessing in a NAI. NAIA programs are not included in that 35. That's is that right. correct? NA, yeah, NAIA has already sanctioned women's wrestling um, separately. So, yeah, that's those are not NAIA programs. Those are NCAA programs. So those, those are separate championships. Got yeah. So, okay, cool. So the way it was this year was, like, the last two years, they've had the WCWA, which before NAIA mm-hmm. sanctioned, uh, that was the governing body. So the last two years, they've had both WCWA and NAIA championships. Yeah, um, which is has kind of cannibalized uh, the the WCWA a little bit, but I think eventually yeah. it'll get to NAIA and NCAA, which would be good. The, the school I'm really 
curious about is Arizona State. They already have Marley Smith on their roster. They list her on their roster, their women's wrestling roster, and then they obviously really? just got this. Yeah, yeah, they did last wait, year. Wait, too. How, how do they how do they have a women's wrestling roster without having a women's wrestling team? I mean, I think it may be it, maybe it's more symbolic. It maybe more something. of a symbolic. Symbolic, okay. Thing, yeah, um, but but now they just had that massive influx of of women's wrestling talent through Sunkist and you know all the women that that. Um, that followed Mark Perry. So Arizona state seems like a, a definite option for one of the programs that yeah. seems like they'll do whatever it's going to take to be like the yeah. pioneer. I think Oklahoma state and, and, as well. Yes. Yeah. I, and I know, um, Kim, Kim Martori, our daughter, she's really big on women's wrestling <laughs> also. Good. And they've been a big supporter of the Arizona state program for a really long time. Yeah. So yeah. that, that would, yeah. that one would make sense. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Wow, you're right. It's right now. Um, I just looked at the um, Arizona State roster, and it's right on top there, above the men's wrestling roster. Yeah. Wow. Cool. That's amazing. I like it. Yeah. So good nice. stuff. Hey, so, yeah. how about a good news day for wrestling? That's yeah. a. That's a. Uh-oh. Hey, there's more good news coming too. Good news coming tomorrow. There is. Yes. We got. Tom- Mike Close. Mike Malstead's got. Mike Malstead's got an announcement at noon tomorrow. You you wouldn't have any idea what that is, Christian, would you? <laughs> I have some idea. Are you gonna tell us? Yeah, tomorrow at eleven a.m. Central, twelve Eastern. Can you give us a hint? Yes, you're going to love it. There's no other hints. Um, custard coupon? No custard coupons. <laughs> um, no, I can't think of a hint that wouldn't uh, wouldn't give it away. What if we had an a lot of people think they know, but they don't actually know. <laughs> what if we had an exclusive partnership with Culver's? I would, I would be on, I would be in support. I would. There's a lot of things uh, I would be happy about, but anything with the with the dessert, who's who's gonna pass on that? Yeah, I'm really still angling for like P Terry's around here. That would be that would probably make my life. Or Popeyes. I would love a Popeyes sponsorship. Two of my favorites, but um, we still we we love RxSports.com and yes. the CBD offering that they give us. It just yes. doesn't doesn't satiate me in terms of hunger. In terms of hunger, yeah, you can't eat that. You can't eat it. Believe yeah. me, yeah. don't put it on your burgers not, either. <laughs> not like custard would. No, not at all. Um, all right, I'm sure we'll bounce back and forth to uh, this UWW stuff because I think it just has a lot of pertinence to the overall wrestling scene. But um, I don't know if there's any further discussion on Penn State episode one now that it's out and watched and viewable by everyone, but everyone had already seen it that's on this show right now. Yeah, we just, but hold on, so the UWW thing I think would be more fun to discuss if we had more details. Without, you know, without details, it's just like us throwing darts in the dark. I mean, we don't know when the, if there's going to be, we don't know if there is going to be 2020 Worlds. We don't know if, if there is, when the trials will be. We don't officially know when the UWA Juniors trials will be for America. I mean, right? So all these, yeah. It just it's hard to have a fun discussion when you don't really know what's going to happen. Well, of note, I know that they were going to have the U twenty threes in. Th- there were places where they were going to have ju- junior and U twenty three trials, yeah. and maybe they're going to have them there. And I would assume the fall. You know, probably not yeah. August, but maybe September. We would have something like that. So, um, okay. And I, I foresee or could expect, you know, given the tightness of the schedule, do they throw a bunch of stuff all on one date venue type of scenario yes. and have a Wrestlepalooza thing for where we determine all our teams? Um, Wrestlepalooza, I love it. Wrestlepalooza 2020. One, one of the biggest questions uh, just in terms of the 2020 Worlds it's like who who do you guys think would bid? What city would bid for it? I mean, Budapest is always one, but <laughs> I just feel like it's going to be in Budapest. It's going to be in again. Budapest, but like, <laughs> could, would it would a city in the U.S. bid? That would be so cool. That's the thing. That is what I want so badly to happen. Iowa City, that would be great. Um, Let's do they it. Host, they've hosted the World Cup. Uh yeah, I I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, I know it's very expensive, so you've really got to get your city on board to want to yeah. to want to sponsor it and think that it's going to. Um, drive serious income. I I also wonder mm-hmm. if if there are going to be restrictions on crowd size, and that I mean that could make it really challenging to for, for cities to want to host. If you're not going to get that gate revenue, um, 
you know, why do you host? But I don't know. I, I hope they I hope they think about that. I hope they figure out how to how to make that all work. Yeah, maybe there's a twenty twenty discount given the social distancing guidelines we're all gonna have to yeah. adhere to. Um so I don't know. <laughs> 2020 discount by the UWW. Dude, really that, that just, that, 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 that is, I want the 2020 discount. Hey, can, can I get a three-piece biscuit and a 2020 discount? And they'd be like, well, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Well, with coronavirus and everything, I just figured, you know, I'm entitled to a 2020 discount. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's go to questions. Let's you know, do it. We can, we can bounce wherever we want, but, uh, Keep the keep the fun train going. Um, hey, from, Christian, you know what I'm so excited for before questions? Tell me. I'm so excited when we don't have to talk about hypothetical wrestling and we can talk about real wrestling matches. <laughs> oh, that'll be nice. And we but but we can talk in hypotheticals about something that is real, right? Not a like we're yeah, gonna talk a, a hypothetical hypothetical. Yeah. Whereas it was just like total <laughs> fantasy land. Uh Yes. But you know what? Last Fantasy Land got us the uh, the Burroughs Burroughs Dake, and we got a whole awesome flow film out of that. So you know what? It's, it's not all bad. Remember when Burroughs got mad that he got written out by Kyle Dake? He didn't <laughs> by get sixteen written. seconds. <laughs> he would not get written out. Um, There's no way you can prove that, and vice versa. Absolutely, I agree. Uh <laughs> All right, from TVT79, this is a robot person, I guess. Yeah. Um, TVT79, oh, those are uh, maybe initials in a birth year. I thought episode one of We Are was great. Thank you. In your opinion, experience, what percentage of the average sports fan not into wrestling would know who Kale is? Man, there, I would say this This will sound bad, so I'll say this is probably true for basically every wrestler except maybe Dan Gable. Is like the one. Why did Gable? Why did Gable go into folk folklore? That's I have no so idea. Weird. Isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, it is because it's folklore. It's like, yes. I don't know. Maybe because it happened in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and what he did for Iowa wrestling, and you know, being that he's the greatest college coach ever right now. But maybe he, that's why. But Kale, I, Kale's at least as good in his first nine years. Yeah, at but, least. He was like Dan Gable. I think was like, you, I, do you know like the SNL skit Bill Brasky? Yeah. It's just like <laughs> the guy's just like the 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 tail. You know, he'd wrestle the line and he would beat all the guys and he'd take he'd beat Chris Taylor and all that stuff. There's such folklore. My dad, who doesn't, I've told this story, didn't watch wrestling at yeah. all, knows this story about Dan Gable. Mowing the lawn with a backpack full of bricks. I don't even and remember. <laughs> and this is my point. We don't even know if that's even true. But my dad either heard that or read that. And that was what he told me. So I think oh, that's God. part of it. But I think Gable is like the only one that is like, oh, yeah, Dan Gable. Right? I'm yeah. guessing. I'm guessing part of it had to do with his story taking place and being told in the 70s. On wide world, wide world of sports, there weren't a lot of options for sports fans. So, like, you were going to hear what sports stories happened on that show. And sure. so everybody was tuned in. Everybody was hearing that. And also, it was this, you know, it was this very, like, sort of nationalistic story of, like, this American going over to the Olympics in 72, which were wrought with – you know, scandal and, and danger and all, you know, like there, there was a hostage crisis, all this kind of stuff. And we got this American who's just like going over there, dominating everybody, doesn't give up a point and then wakes mm -hmm. up the next day and, you know, goes for a 10 mile run and people are documenting that whole thing. And it's all, you know, it's, that might be propaganda. Maybe it's propaganda. Like, uh, like some it of probably the, the Russians, wasn't. Put, out I, the Russians I, yeah. put out a lot of propaganda, Christian, maybe you're just brainwashed. I mean, about, I, about Gable. Why would they put out propaganda about how great an American is? That makes no sense. Uh, do you know how propaganda Everyone, works? Everyone. What do you mean? Yeah, propaganda. We don't know that Dan Gable actually ran those 10 miles, so it might be propaganda. Well, he, he to make us have. feel good, just like you're saying. Just like Maybe you're saying, that just was – maybe Dan Gable was um, America's first glimpse into how uniquely wired wrestlers are. Yeah. 
and just mm. how like what okay. wait he won the olympics and he ran 10 miles the whole point of running 10 miles is so you can win the olympics why are you still doing this and it's like the first window into this really unique mindset of sacrifice and pain basically right and how hard it is and yeah i think that just stuck out if that was the first experience of you learning about that then it's it's very intriguing and now we know and maybe Dan Gable was was an extreme in in a lot of these ways, but we know that a lot of the greats. There's just we we just know that Jordan Burroughs and Kale Sanderson and the Tom and Terry Brands and John Smith. There was just a we understand the element of sacrifice, right? And that yeah. that was just a mm-hmm. part of it. Whereas that wasn't realized then. So I think for that reason, Gable is like an exception here, and I think it's a very small percentage of common sports fans would know kale yeah and it's agreed. not just because he keeps a lower profile on himself individually i don't think it's really that because i think there are other wrestling coaches and personalities that put themselves out there a lot more than kale and are not near the level of um mainstream awareness that kale sanderson has because he won four titles because he is the coach of penn state he might be the best college sports coach right now in yeah, so in America, I think I even read an article that that is probably true. He's the most dominant coach in all of NCAA athletics. I think. Yeah, I, I don't. I think Reed. I don't know about. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Ben. I just don't know about college sports make that point. So, but keep going. I think regionally people know about Kale. I'm like I went to you know little NAI school in Iowa and. Every, like everybody, not just wrestling people, knew who Kale Sanderson was at that time, and I think probably still do, just because he was on the front page of the Des Moines Register all the time, mm-hmm. and he was, you know. So I bet regionally, yes, you know, people know know Kale, but across the board, you know, probably not. Yeah. So uh, unfortunate, but hey, we're we're. I think the sport is making making strides. The person also asked about like Burroughs and Snyder, uh, Bur- Burroughs. I think he's probably more – there's more awareness of him than Snyder. I don't know who there's more yeah. awareness of, Kale or, or Burroughs, which is interesting. I would say Bur- I, I would Burroughs. Burroughs' social following is massive. It is so big. Yeah. Um, so probably yeah. Burroughs. I mean, I, I've, I've said on multiple occasions, Jordan Burroughs is the most popular wrestler who's ever lived by yeah. pro- probably a factor of, I don't know, more than one. Um, so – that yeah. okay next uh, well let, let, let's let's say, let's list our top five current most popular american wrestlers this could be of any age sex whatever mm. well, burrows okay. one burrows one yeah or are you gonna put the yeah are you gonna put the santa one <laughs> <laughs> um oh, man that, that why do be... people love the santa why do they always click on his articles and, and stuff he's uh, just so different I, I just huh. think I think, but he doesn't he doesn't do social media, so we can't go look at what his social media is. He's such maybe I maybe that's part of it. It's like I don't have any access to this person. I don't know anything about him. All I know about him is what I see him do on the mat and maybe in an in an interview. Yeah. And 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 mm. I think possibly that mystique has driven him higher because everyone else is so much more accessible, right? And maybe yeah. that's part of the the. Uh, a little bit of the kale mystique is he's so sort of off the grid in that way, um, even though yeah. those those are two diametrically opposed individuals. So yeah. I think um, I think that's part of it with with DeSanto. I think how he launched himself into you know the the Vision Quest thing of him going Spencer's weight and um, you know that the PIAA thing happening and then he ends up at Drexel and he's this like. Totally, just no one wrestles with a pace like that, right? And then he kind of like combusts completely at NCAA. It's just like a total explosion. But worst case scenario, not only do you lose, you lose in the most um, the most disgraceful way possible trying to injure your opponent, right? That's disgraceful. And so, so that like adds to the mystique, right? And then, yes. then... He leaves and he goes where? Boom! Nuclear meltdown. Oh, he goes to goodness. Iowa. Yeah. And 
He's doing better, and he's wrestling really well, but he still has these little glimpses of, oh, my gosh. There's such – there's – I think – I may be getting around to it. There is such an element of I have no idea what this kid is going to do. I have no idea mm-hmm. if he's going to wrestle and win, wrestle and lose. Is he going to give a thumbs up when he's about to double egg someone? Is he going to – Face much someone, you have no idea what Austin DeSanto is going to do. True. Whether he's you don't wrestling, know what he's going to do. Whether you he's wrestling know. someone great, someone totally beneath his level, it doesn't matter. You have no idea what this guy is going to do. I, I think including of, his coaches, I, I, including him, including him. I think that's the thing too. Is like you, 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 you watch him and <laughs> you, you, he does him. He, he seems like he 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 he's. Not 100% in control, and then he in interviews you can tell he he knows that, and that's something that is like a point of focus for him. And he's like, you know, he's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, but it's like he can't. He's like so overcome with just this this passion to do well and desire that he just like loses control, and it's like I don't know. There's something really compelling about about somebody who's so obsessed that, that it's so even important. they can't control himself. It's so important to him. Yeah, right. It's so and like it's not that. It's the most important to Austin DeSanto. And if you rank how important wrestling is to someone, um, that he would be number one necessarily. But it is so visible how important it is to him. Whereas, like, other wrestlers are maybe able to internalize it a little bit. He's no more driven than than Jordan or Spencer Lee or Austin DeSanto or, or, or whoever. But because you just see it, right, it's just yeah. that much more consumable. So I think we actually got a little bit closer. It's not just some phenomena. I think there's a few little factors that have contributed to um, DeSanto being just like appointment viewing every time. And, that's that's actually, some, and there's yeah. like 50 wrestlers. There are probably 50 wrestlers that are better than Austin DeSanto that don't – that just do not garner the kind of interest that he does. Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I think is important – I was brought up about, about Brett Favre is – you could almost outward, outwardly see his competitiveness, right? You could see the emotions, you know, as, you know, as he's fist pumping and everything. And, you know, I know football obviously plays that a little more, but there's just something different about the way Brett Favre did it. And I think that was one of the things that made him popular. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys outlined a few. Number one, that the, uh, the emotion is so external. Like we, mm-hmm. we can see it. And then number two, the unexpectedness. No matter who he's wrestling. He can wrestle in a scrub and do something crazy. Or he wrestling a really good guy and do something crazy, and you just never know what's gonna happen. And there's something about wanting to see what the outcome is gonna be when we don't know that is interesting. And you know what, Favre is a, is an interesting example. Bracky's gonna love this, but um, what, what <laughs> I think the number one word association with Brett Favre is like Brett Favre go. Everyone says gunslinger, gunslinger. He just he yeah. lets it glow. Yeah. He lets it fly. And gunslingers they go big. And then they then they bust right. They th- he threw a lot of picks. Yeah. He took a lot of risks. A lot of them. A lot, there was no. It's like Russell Wilson, super calculated. I'm very accurate. I don't make mistakes. But you also don't have those exhilarating moments where you you go yeah. long and you do all this crazy stuff. It's just a little yeah. more exciting when Brett's out there and he celebrates like yeah. a kid, even though he was 40 years old for the Vikings, right? <laughs> so I think I think that I think that is. Um, those human emotions and like that it's just it's just relatable and exciting for fans so um i don't know brett Favre, austin DeSanto. i didn't think we'd be making that comparison but i think it's very uh so appropriate right now our top five current most popular wrestlers jordan burrows austin DeSanto, brett Favre. brett Favre. brett Favre is the number three most popular wrestler um okay for real for real for real uh top five most popular did you say american Uh, American, yeah. I mean, we we might current, have to do. We have to play current, current any, Yeah, I'm gonna say JB mm-hmm. one, yes. JB one, Spencer Lee two, Spencer um, DeSanto. Really, really, you put you're going DeSanto that high? <laughs> okay, okay. You get you see the numbers. I don't see the numbers, Christian. You see the numbers. Um, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. David Taylor, I think three. Yeah, I think he's pretty high up there. Um, okay, so do do you think Dake Snyder or Cox make it in there, or should I just go back to college wrestling, back to a few more college wrestlers? Man, I'm telling you what, Nick Soriano is is he's in this top six or seven. 
I'll say that. Really? Yeah. He does crazy numbers? Crazy. Okay. And then, so, you know, I would say some, one, one of the uh, Cox, Dake, Snyder, one of those guys. Well, I would say Taylor, Dake, Cox. Taylor, Dake, Cox. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, G- Gable's probably up there somewhere. People kind of love him because he had the pro- prodigy status. People love Dayton Fix. Um, yes. Although, you know, we haven't got the same in Oklahoma State single in the last year. Um, yeah. Dayton. So, maybe – I maybe maybe like I made a ten there. Yep, I think it's it's probably that. I feel maybe I've forgotten some, but yeah, it's it's about that. And it's not necessarily co- all those guys are amazing, but it's it's yeah. certainly it's not correlated with success. Yeah, no, it's not. It's definitely not. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was fun. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, Andrew Finn, I like this one. I'm still catching up on FRL, so I just listened to one where y'all talk about Lance and Ben's fascination with the elite mindsets. I'm sure uh, – I just want to know if Ben or any of you have seen Free Solo, and if so, what do you think of Honold and his pursuit and execution of the climb? Oh, I'm it's sure awesome. You've, he's I'm de- sure you've seen he, this, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely slightly autistic. Um, yeah. That, that's for sure. Um, I mean, if you want if you want uh, an insight I, – I always mess up the name of this book. I mean um, – I'm going to give you the name of the book. Uh, if you want insight into elite mindset, uh, there's a book. Let me see. I'm, I'm going to get it. Uh, it's by Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler. I believe it's called The Rise of Superman. Uh, sorry, guys. Rise of – let's see. Yes, The Rise of Superman by Stephen Kotler. Um, and it talks about how elite uh, – not elite. Uh, extreme sports athletes are able to find peak performance – more often because they literally have to be there because it is a life or death situation, mm-hmm. um, right? They, they could die. But then the bad part about this is a lot of them die because yeah. in, in order to find your flow state, you have to be right at the edge, right at the edge of your own skill level, right? Yeah. If it's too easy, you can't find it. If it's too hard, you can't find it. It's got to be like right at the edge of where you can um, exist in that flow state. And so – Obviously, with these extreme sports, they have to find it because it's life or death. But then they keep pushing, 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 and unfortunately, a lot, a lot of them perish in this pursuit of flow state or greatness or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, um, the other one that I, I think is so fantastic and I, I recommend um, it's called it's either called Taking Every Wave or Catching Every Wave. Let's see, every, by uh, Laird Hamilton. Um, it was so awesome. It's kind of, it's called take take every way of uh, the life of Laird Hamilton, and that was like really awesome too. And kind of a you know insight into how his mind works in, in elite elite extreme sports. Well, I think um, with if you if, so free solo is about this climber named Alex Honnold, who is the first yeah. and only person to do a free climb. No harness of any kind up El Capitan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just yes. almost, if it is like visually just insane, it's incomprehensible yes. that someone would attempt this. It is, it is very literally. It's so, it's so mission. dumb. It's, yeah, so, it's dumb. so dumb. I mean, it's, it's literally, yeah. I mean, Alex Honnold climbing is so important to him. He will die for this at some point. Yeah. I'm really, yeah. it seems if he continues, oh, yeah. he's going to die from this. And he's probably, he has, yes. he has made peace with that he is yeah. that is part of why he's been able to be he's the greatest climber ever i'm i'm assuming right no one's done this uh, i don't know climbing, but yeah I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll declare him the goat uh even though i don't know anything about climbing other than this guy did something no one else would do <laughs> but it's just so important to him he wanted to do this it's mm-hmm. like he only this is where he feels alive right so he's willing to die to do that um yeah he man you know, speaking of that Gable, that Gable moment, he wins the Olympics and then like runs 10 miles the next morning or whatever. One thing that was like so crazy to me at the end after he uh, and the guy is d- did survive. So if you're going to watch the film, you know, sp- spoiler there. Um, but uh, he gets done climbing El Cap, which is like a, how many hours did it take him? Like three or four hours yeah, it's, to it's climb. So he's do- and it's like the most physically exhausting. And they're like, what are you going to do now? Like he's like, I think I'm going to go. He, he lives in his van. 
He's like, I'm gonna go do some hangboards. He goes and does he goes and does like finger exercises hanging from a board in his van after he's after he just did the most insane climbing. It's like Gable feet running ever. the ten miles. Yeah, crazy. So crazy. Yep. When, uh, <laughs> when he's he's like dating this woman. Yeah. And she she, she at, like they're having this conversation about. Um, you know, if he could be like, I don't know if he's married or like committed to a family and he says something about yeah. how it would be difficult for him to have to prioritize maximizing his likelihood of survival for somebody else. Yeah. And she's like, well, don't you, don't you think about me like that now? And he's like, no, yeah, <laughs> no. He's, no. He's, he's cold. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. But he was so, it's so true though. I, yeah. I love that. I, don't you love people who just unvarnished truth to just. You just don't even got to second guess what they're saying because they're either, uh, you know, they're either not smart enough or maybe they just don't give a damn and they just tell you the truth all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. My brother says the Laird Hamilton thing is awesome. There you oh, go. it's so awesome. I also you got, that. that's not, for me, that's a must watch. It. Laird Hamilton, Take Every Wave, totally fantastic. Okay. Uh, Nathan Ford, do you think Kale will watch We Are? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely will. Yes. He'll watch it. Um, Terry Steiner said he'd like to see USA ditch folk style for freestyle. Do you hate this idea as much as I do, especially while Greco still exists? I mean, if one has to go, ask the scan, <laughs> ask the scan man. I don't want to get into that part, but I don't know, man. Well, one, I do like the. What what I see sort of happening, or kind of hope I I do like folk style. Some aspects of freestyle rules starting to creep into folk style. I still just like, mm -hmm. man. You tell me you gotta get rid of folk style top and bottom. I just get sad. Um, I would really, Agreed. I really like that. But I think there's ways we should make our neutral wrestling more freestyle centric. I think the danger rule is a very freestyle resemble resembling um maneuver i would love to get to a more black and white step out rule but i don't think you should ditch folk style completely yeah i agree i'm very good at ditching folk style think about it like this you're getting getting rid of folk style you're eliminating the most popular wrestling style in america yeah think about that think about that mm -hmm. and you're replacing it with a super non-subjective uh, rule set in a lot of ways where it's totally dealer's choice on how certain exchanges are scored, which I know there's an element of that in folk style, but I think it's more so in freestyle. So I'm not yes, signing up for is. that. I, I think the one, the one really interesting complexity here is like, I mean, this is a quote coming from Terry Steiner. You think about women's wrestling and as women's wrestling is being added at the NCAA level, I, I mean, I don't think anybody's, like disappointed that it's being added as a freestyle sport instead of a no, folk style sport. And so great. there's an inconsistency there, I think at least to a certain degree in, in how people think about men's and women's wrestling. Like, you know, pe people are not saying that it's a travesty that women's wrestling is not being added as a folk style sport. So I, I don't know. It's interesting getting rid, like getting rid of folk style sounds impossible and, and like a bad idea. But if we had to start from scratch, I, I don't know why you would, start where well, you would start with folk style now Maybe. if you're starting so i don't know yeah andrew spay wants to get rid of folk style he he's he's on the the coach steiner train he says get it out but, um i'm not i'm not on board um mooney says the shirt i was wearing and we are is awesome well you can buy it now uh shop.flowsports.tv so check it out jail sonnen was wearing it i think ben askren has one the black on black flow shirts so yeah yeah yes. everyone's always asked uh you know hey are we gonna sell shirts and now we sell them so check them out there um okay this is one for ben why does every mma commentator or analyst refer to former ncaa champion fighters you ben johnny uh brock lesnar ed as all american instead of national champ uh yeah that's the question basically that does happen a lot no I have no idea whatsoever. It happens a lot, though. It's really strange. I don't know if maybe they think it's more like, uh, I don't know, 
that people have more understanding of what that means than national champion. But, but they don't know what that means. Like, I mean, for the general just person, when they say, uh, when they say all American, what does that mean? Is it top four, top six, top eight, top 10? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Does it happen at a tournament? Who knows? Right. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they say that. Uh, it's really, it is really strange to me. This guy brings up a good point. Um, maybe I will ask those guys sometime. Yeah, come on, you're in the industry. Hey, one other point made by uh, Craig Picorni, who works here at Flow. Oh, speaking Craig? of Craig Picorni, <laughs> oh, this is funny. Two oh. things. Do you know Craig, Ben? I do not. I'm, I'm, I think you probably said the, the name sounds the name sounds super familiar, but I don't know. Yeah. So one item one, he <laughs> is in the Jeff Rutledge Super Duck DV highlight DVD. Oh, <laughs> fire him! Fire him! Get him out. Picorni is a beast. Um. But he did get it's I won't even say he got super duck. See, Jeff Rutledge, his super duck was like a setup to get to a single leg. And that's how that's why he did it. Like to me, a super duck is like one way, you the hit the way. thing and the guy falls down and you're behind him. And there's like no touch. But he like does a super duck motion, he gets to a single leg and then he would finish. That's what he did to Craig. Yeah. So one, that's Craig is duck. it's not a super duck. Two, Craig made a point relative to what we're talking about. He said the, with the folk style freestyle transition, one thing that would be very difficult is now we need three refs for every single, every single batch, every duel. Yeah. And I guess you could say, well, just throw well, that I out. Think, we have uh, yeah. one man mechanics. Three man, three man mechanics is the dumbest thing ever. Don't get me started on that. Oh, you don't like it? It's unnecessary. It's a diffusion of responsibility that makes them worse at what they do. Well, oh, well, there it is. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I can't. I, mean, I don't like three man mechanics at all. I do think the easy solution is, okay, just have one. We can do that. Just whatever that guy says is what it is. Just like in many yeah. other sports, it seems. And like then you have an appeal. You have an appeal, and you have another really good referee somewhere in the building. And well, but you, you'd also you would have what? What do you have about that? Well, I'm just I'm just thinking like if you do this to if you do this in college, you basically have to do it in high school then too, because then it's only high school. Yeah, yeah. But you're well, not bigger. I mean, not not every. Not every dual meet has a separate referee for uh, reviewing, correct? Yeah. I mean, well, I'm saying for like, I'm thinking of high school duels are not going to have review and stuff like that. It's just going to be that guy. No. There's no jury of appeal. Yeah. It's just you. Sure. You make the decision. Yeah. One of the points or one of the purposes of three-man mechanics on the like developmental level seems to be that you can put like more experienced officials with developing officials. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. like, the, but the thing that you just said, Ben, makes a ton of sense because I, I – at tournaments I've seen a lot of times when the the mat official is the young, the newer official that that mat official is constantly looking over to whoever the most veteran person is like as they're holding up the yeah. you know the two or whatever and and um it does it just seems like there there is this definite hierarchy in the whole group of officials you watch you watch them hang out yeah. and you can tell like who's the alpha and who you know who's sort of oh, yeah. is, is always going to be taking their cues and so yeah that's really interesting um, they could just do it like like how uh, you know youth youth freestyle tournaments were like when I was growing up where like you know they let an older kid be the ref and they give them like uh, if they ref all day they get free admission into the tournament that's how that's how it was. boom <laughs> that's one way to do it yeah um all right next question wait that way I think what well, we, before you back we back there what were we on oh oh the all American thing with MMA commentators you know the one that that bugged the crap out of me. Uh, was uh, when they said world class and they didn't really mean world class when they just had this broad term world class and it would like make me irate like don't you guys know what world class really is because this this is not it that would who make would, me so mad. Who would, they would say like who are they give me an uh, there, there's one specific person I'm thinking of I'm not gonna say his name because I feel I would feel too mean to say it uh, but they they would say world class and it was like no, no what were that person's no. wrestling credentials. Oh, then I'll, then I'll give it away if I tell you slash, that. Slash initials. <laughs> yeah. Oh, F it, F it. F, I, you know what? People love me because I just say what I'm thinking, and I, I don't have a filter. I'm, cause maybe I'm too dumb to have a filter. But it was Matt Hamill, and he won the Death World Championships or something. Uh, and he was like a D3 All-American or you know something yeah. like that. They would call him world class. I was like, no, this guy is absolutely 100% not world class in the yeah. truest sense of the word. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, See now, now, you guys made me look like a dick. No, that's not. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> he probably wouldn't argue with you, right? I mean, he didn't. He didn't tell him to. I I, I don't know. I don't know really. the guy. Uh yes. Um, there was a lot of folk style to freestyle. I had no, there was another folk style to freestyle question that really surprised me in there. Uh, how long did it take for college coaches to stop recruiting Ben for a full time assistant job? Has that stopped? I've been I've been getting off for a little bit. Right, I'll make you an offer right now. Full time assistant, Piles Wrestling Academy. <laughs> I, I mean, I would I would never be an assistant if I'm going. It's going to be I would be a head coach. And there's only two places I would ever go: Wisconsin, and Missouri. There's and, and even even then, at that point, I I don't know that I'd leave any more work. It's been a really good situation. The academy is so much fun. Um, we're growing like crazy. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think so. Nice, but they stopped calling. So you did Arizona State, Missouri. You're on staff some. Then, I was on Missouri. Yeah, I was on staff in Missouri two years and Arizona State for two years, and then I was, yeah, that's the last time I coached at the collegiate level. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Do do do. What next question will I go to? Someone asked best wrestler to go into MMA. It's very obviously Henry Cejudo, right? Um. Well, Rulot had one fight. Okay. Well. Uh, you know Marshall. who else had a fight that was Marshall had a fight. Uh, Kenny Monday had a fight. Was it Kenny Monday? No. Kevin Jackson. Did he have a fight? Kevin Jackson, Kevin Jackson definitely Jackson wasn't. Fight. Okay. All right. Maybe it's not very obvious. Roy, I was thinking Roy, more Roy modern Sa- era. Yeah. Royce Alger had a fight. Um, not a world champion. No, I don't was, was, Mark Col- was Mark Coleman a world champion? I don't think so. Uh, you know who else fought one time and he was terrible? Uh, Kareem Gaber. Remember him? No. You guys don't do you guys know who that is or no? Mm-hmm. He was this Egyptian Greco world champion. Oh he was yes, yes, yes. Savage. And he Dude. definitely threw matches at one of the world championships for sure. He threw matches. I know. And then he fought one is. time. He, you know what? He probably threw the fight too. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure. And then the other guy that fought uh was do you, do you guys remember who Eldar Kurtanizi was? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh my gosh, you got okay, Google a picture of this guy right now. It's Eldar, E L D A R. Kurt and Easy says K U R T Kurt A N I D Z E. Uh, oh wow, okay. yeah, he's he, he's clean. I yeah. <laughs> 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 wow, maybe in the defense soap status. Um, yeah, it's a strong looking individual. Holy crap, this dude! I think he fought one time though, and he uh he uh but he was a multiple time world champion as well. I believe. I want to see as Donnie make the switch, Reza. Oh, that would be good. You want to talk about like uh, some knockout power? Mm-hmm. Also, I've seen him do some like crazy stuff with like cars and it's, weird workouts. Is the best wrestler MMA turn MMA fighter Yoel Romero? Oh, <sighs> like the combo. There we go. Well, it's it's Henry. He won the Olympics in wrestling, and then but wait, won two weights at UFC. Like if you're talking about well, the okay, best but- like hybrid. No. Oh, I thought we were talking about the best wrestling accomplishments yeah, yeah. to make. So Kurt, I guess Kurt so. and Easy did two world championships and five other world slash Olympic medals. That's pretty good. He lost one fight. He probably got he probably got paid to throw that fight against uh, Ironhead Fujita. That's most likely. Uh, but Yo Romero, he won how many world medals? A lot. Uh, okay, he won world gold ninety nine, silver, silver, bronze, bronze, silver in the Olympics. And how many of those did he get paid off to lose? Is probably a good question to ask. Also, because mm. <laughs> he, he was he was silver in two thousand, silver in two thousand two, and silver in two thousand five. Ben's trying to get me stabbed. I won't. I won't walk into those waters. Um, what? I mean, listen, listen, guys. We this is another thing. This people, certain Cubans have been. Um, they have been suspended for doing this certain thing. I told you a story with, in which I was in an elevator with a person who admitted to doing said activity. Um, you know, I, I think it's fairly obvious that the, these things happen. And actually, you know, Yol, Yol is a great example because what I was told was you try to win a world title as early as possible, which he did because he was like 19 when he won the world title or something. Um maybe 20, I don't know, in 99. And then all of a sudden, he can only get silver and bronze after that. It's pretty sketchy to me. That's sketchy indeed. Uh, without question. All right, next one. Uh, when are the next two episodes we are dropping? 
So it's going to be next Wednesday for episode two. And then two weeks later, episode three. We'll have something in between there, um, I think. We're working on that. That would be another nice. really cool that would be another really cool thing, but we don't know. Um can't say anything about that yet either. But we will be able to say something tomorrow about something else that's actually better than that. So get excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stop taunting us. I, I will. I will soon. Less than a little more than twenty four hours. Um Someone asked, what are the unwritten rules at Flow Sports? <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, no one writes them down. Oh, That's the problem. Hmm. I couldn't. I, I don't really know what the unwritten rules of Flow Sports are. That's a good question. Wow. I didn't realize Gaber. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I will leave. You're fine. Gaber was silver in 2002, silver in 2003, won the Olympics in 2004, and then he came back in 2012, and then he was suspended in 2015. Yes, I remember what? when he got suspended. Wow, I didn't realize. Why didn't he wrestle from 04 until 2012? Oh, my. Oh, my. God. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> my head just exploded. My head just exploded. Okay. You know the other guy I just showed you? Um, oh, wait. I got to look up rule on now. Okay, the other guy I just showed you, Eldar Kirtanidze. Yeah. Um, okay, he had one fight ever. Okay. Uh, Kareem Gaber has one fight ever. I guess they were both against the same opponent and both on the New Year's Eve card. Oh my god. You know what that means? The Japanese they pay they pay, they pay these dudes to lose the Iron Head Fujita. <laughs> really? Yes. I don't know that. No, I know that. I just looked it up. <laughs> I definitely did. All right. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. What are the unwritten rules of flow sports? I don't know. I don't know if we have any. I was I was hoping Bray would have something funny. I mean, I think I think that like there is there is a an unwritten rule that like the wrestling content team is sort of has its own own rules, right? Doesn't that feel feel a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it kind of like we're our, we are the loudest of the bunch. It's just kind of like understood. Like if we're if any other department was like hand fighting and like going takedowns in the middle, people would be like, what the heck? But like people will just are used to Bader and Mike and me and Brett and all these guys just like, you know, over under body lock and stuff like that. And people walk by. It's just like just like a very normal thing just as though we were sit- sitting there. So that's kind of an understood <laughs> thing. Because yeah, I, I, just, I just got here last summer and before that, you know, I had a very different, had a very different job. And so like – I'm imagining like seeing my coworkers outside playing spike ball in 100 degrees, and then they walk in and they're just like dr- like drenched in sweat. And you're just like and go back to work. Hey, how's it going? They go back and start working. <laughs> we literally sit down and start working, completely <laughs> drenched like, in sweat. Just stuff like that. Where, but people here are just on phase. They're just like very used to that. Um, yeah. You know, so it like yeah, you're used to see it. It it is really it's really cool to. See, I don't know to be somewhere where where people see that they understand that they understand that um that, you know there are a lot of different kinds of uh, ways that people are productive and you know something I really like. All right. Um, hey, 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 hold on. Before you next question, I have something so fantastic that you must hear. I so that. I started to think about all these other really great fighters who had um, who had, had just one fight, and I wanted to look up you know if they got paid to lose. So Alexander Karelin had one fight. He did win, though, in Japan. Do you know what Alexander Karelin's PhD is in? Oh, boy. Because this is so fantastic. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh... Methods methods of execution of suplex throw counters. What? Well, it's not real. (laughs) That's – it's on his Wikipedia, Christian. Who who gave – what university (laughs) – what university gave him a PhD? (laughs) Uh, how Saint how is our Larry Christoph? How is Larry Cri- St. Petersburg? St. Petersburg. <laughs> Methods of execution of suplex throw counters. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome! What what a claim to fame. Um, yes, yeah, he's one of the best ever. All right, let's get the heck out of here. Nine thirty four. Oh, but can, we gotta talk about methods of execution of suplex throw counters. Well, I don't. I don't know anything about that. I don't know any methods of execution. I just. I need to learn. I need to learn from 
uh, Mr. Corellan. Dr. Corellan. I don't even have an associate in, in <laughs> yeah. the <feds> of. <laughs> we don't have associates. We don't have a, a, I don't know, a GED. Yeah. In this. Stuff. I would love to be able to get a PhD in cradle, in Masters of uh, Theory of Cradle Execution. <laughs> well, I think you could probably give, you could just give that to yourself and then you have it. You've given yourself a black belt. I, Why not a PhD? I have a PhD. <laughs> I have a PhD in Masters of Theory of Execution of Cradle Technology. Yes, and a yeah. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Damn straight. Askren Wrestling Academy. There's no reason you can't give out degrees. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, you could be. A We're giving out PhDs. That's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. All right, Kyle, we're good to go, buddy. Hey, make sure you tune in tomorrow, 11 Central, 12 Eastern. Again, I don't know where you are. You could be anywhere for all I know. But this time tomorrow, Friday, we'll be talking. Uh, we'll be making a really, really, really big amount announcement that you are going to like. I promise yeah. you. That. You're going to like this. Um, so you have to wait a little more than a day. It's going to be great. Um, we can't wait to deliver this news. We've been waiting to deliver this news for a while, and it's finally time. So please tune into that. If you haven't watched episode one of We Are, Kale's First Decade, please do that. Many of you already have watched it. Thank you. Uh, tell your friends. Show your children. I think they'll like it as well. Uh, we'll be back next week, come heck or high water. Um, actually, Nomad's coming. Nomad's going to come in. Uh, he hit Ooh, me up. He nice. said he wants to come next week, so... That'll be uh, that'll be spicy. Uh, now, so now Bray only has to do like five hours of studio shows a day <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead great. of eight. Uh, so thanks to David for filling in, and uh, we will see you see you Tuesday. Have a good weekend, guys. Thanks. Peace.